Welcome to episode 98 of Let's Talk Geek. In the show, Skype jumps the shark, Google Maps in South Africa gets live traffic, and the HTC One X versus the Samsung Galaxy S3. Flame on! Welcome to the show. I'm Jan. I'm Tim Hawk. I'm Gareth. I'm Johan. Our random for the evening is Rikio uh, from Random from Wikipedia. Uh, Rikio is a manga which which later adapted to two OVAs in a live action film named Rikio: The Story of Ricky, created by Masato Takago and. <laughs> The story is about a young man who has learned the art of Qigong. Qigong, dude, that is hardcore. Yeah, have you seen what Qigong does? They like bend their feet back. How's that geeky? My feet do not bend that way. It's an manga. O- manga. Manga. How is manga not geeky? And OVAs. <laughs> what is the OVA? Original something anime. Video. Oh. Video anime. <laughs> oh, I'm willing okay. to bet. Uh, you anyway, have you not been to Qigong any from- gaming conference like ever? I've been to it. Oh, you're right. And yeah, also, okay. and there it's, we go. It's, kung f- it's Kung Fu. And come on, Bruce Lee and all, all those movies. <laughs> Martial arts. I just want to finish this. Uh, f- Qigong from one of the Chiang Kai Shek's bodyguards and has become so strong that he can literally punch holes through people and solid objects. Because that's fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can already see how epic the villains have to become in order to yes. rival him. And, so. and then he has to get stronger. You know, that whole anime thing, you know, keeps on yeah, And then he has to go and, over 9,000. Yeah. yeah, the whole, exactly. The Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> just like to, it ridiculous Goes all the way thing. to 13. 11, yeah. sorry. <laughs> all the way to 11. <laughs> fail, fail, <laughs> fail. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, if you're watching the show live, join us on IRC, irc.ltnet.tv. Uh, we're in hash ltnet. With no chat topic, that has to be remedied immediately. Uh, who has ops? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Um, if you don't know how to work an IRC client, we have neat buttons on the website, pop out chat and video and chat and stuff for you to use. And that brings us to events. Yes. Apparently, there, there are some things happening. <laughs> Google I.O. I which is big. next week, by the looks of things. Um, yeah, Google I.O., which is going to be pretty big. They moved it from a two-day event to a three-day event, so 27th, 28th, 29th, uh, so that they can fit more stuff in because they have so much stuff and people just want to attend more sessions. Okay. Uh, there will be an event at the Innovation Hub as well. People here just want in more time off work. Maybe that too. Uh, more time off work to spend doing cool Googly stuff with all of the Googlers. Uh, so there will be an event in, at the Innovation Hub in Pretoria, uh, where I think it's running from 7 o'clock in the evening because of the wonderful time differences between here and San Francisco. Uh, so you can go there. You can watch the live stream. They'll have a couple of talks there as well. I think one of the guys from House for Hack will be involved, so you can expect to see some, some interesting stuff from them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for the rest of the events, I see we're pretty empty, even though I know there is a thing tomorrow. There's a, a Toshiba launch event tomorrow. Uh, we'll yep. be and, attending. And there's uh, uh, an exclusive. So you guys are going to the Toshiba thing. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to the highway thing. I had to decline the Toshiba and both Lenovo events. Oh. Um, because I've got the highway event and the exclusives event in the morning. So for those of you who missed up our, our previous shows where we've discussed these. Tomorrow's busy. Uh, exclusives is a launching a social book buying and selling service. Um, uh, we've done uh, a bit of an article on it already. So maybe mm. I'll just go through that. Um, some of the information leaked early and so I, I called them up and said listen I'm doing an article on this because the info leaked early so you can help make it accurate or you can let me write what I want and uh, <laughs> and so uh, they helped me write um, and uh, the uh, basically what it sounds like is they're going to have stickers for people's profiles on the exclusives website so it's not like a tack on thing they're building it right into the exclusives online store exclusives mm-hmm. with the one yeah zero today um, and um, so you uh, you earn stickers by sharing stuff but they're also sharing uh, what stuff sharing and rating stuff sharing products so exclusives also doesn't just sell books but I mean yeah sharing books uh, they sell games, so I, I, I'm hoping that you'll get some points for sharing that stuff. Um, and then they say that, that it's not just about individual 
social interaction mm -hmm. with exclusives. They're trying to encourage group interaction. So if you form part of a group, you'll earn your achievements or rewards or whatever so you want to call them. So if you do like a book, a book club that you get together and… Perhaps. And then whatever, you share and rate and, and do your thing as a group. I don't quite know how it'll work yet. Uh, hopefully that gets explained tomorrow. And, um, and then you can unlock discounts. Um, cool. It seems to be the general thrust of… What kind of rewards they'll be? Did they did they give you a reason for the strategy? Is there is, are they seeing a decline in book sales or Amazon? Okay, so they want to take on the Amazon. No, no not take on the Amazon. Survive Amazon. Survive because oh, they be they actually have an opportunity to not become what Borders became in the US, which is non-existent. So so they all of that. Are they talking about electronic books? Uh, they do sell electronic. They books already many? sell EPUB. Uh, books on their website. E effectively, I think they're trying to create a community around exclusives. So you have a reason to be going there and from there you I mean, get your reviews. And you've always had a reason to go to exclusive books because they were the guys that always hang the coffee shop off the bookstore. And now they've shut those down. Yeah. Oh, have they? Well, well in, in, not in not across the board, but, but, but in some stores, like the Centurion store, uh, there's no longer the coffee the shop. The Rosebank store. Rosebank uh, as well. Or, you know, now, if you want that, you have to go to like a place like Scoobs. I mean, that's what made them exclusive Monte was Casino. the fact that you could sit down, go take a book, sit down in a coffee shop. And well, they had the Seattle place. Coffee Company added to it after. Yeah. Uh, so it was exclusives, and mm. then exclusives launched Seattle. Okay. Still on the side. So, yeah, um, it, I mean, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see the way books are going. Uh, it's interesting to see the way selling is going. Uh, maybe that's, that's now, a topic for a whole other I'm, show. I'm actually excited just, to, to see just what they're going to do with this because if they do actually bring some healthy competition into ebooks, I might stop buying from Amazon because at the moment, well, buying from Amazon is just quick, easy, and cheap. Yes. Let's go to something else. Cheap when did you last buy a real book? Um, I bought a stack, I know, a stack of books last year, this year. From? No, those were for my birthday. And from uh, Take A Lot. I had them ordered. Okay. Okay, but I just want to know, I mean, because the, book, the discussion around the books itself is one thing. Mm. But then the reading device, what are, are they doing something specifically? They've got reading devices. Man, what are those things called? I don't even remember well, the name. It doesn't matter. What, Kobo? Price, what do they cost? Yeah, they, they, they They're cost in the same like range as a Kindle. Or an, an under kind of thing. And, and you, um, you, but yeah, it needs to be, the problem is it needs, needs to be to come so down. much cheaper than the Kindle. That stuff must come down. Yeah. Look, with this stuff, you cannot send all the electronic books. I think they sell it must be in an EPUB or something format. Yes. So it's a format you can download. You can send that through to your Kindle. Yes, but then you're but, like, oh, you see, thank there, you. there's the problem. You have to send it through to your Kindle and have it converted because the Kindle doesn't natively read EPUBs. Just get uh, so you just buy from Amazon. Yeah, or you get ca exactly. So, so th that's actually failing on Amazon's part, not supporting the open EPUB format, and it has been since the launch of the Kindle, and we're now whoa, whoa, on what generation whoa, whoa, whoa. four. They've got no, in, they've got no incentive to exactly. Support they that. don't. That's why they don't want to do it. They have that's as much only, incentive to support so that as Apple does to let you That's another apps reason out. why I'm excited because if Exclusive actually does something useful, then but you know, I'm maybe, is, maybe the some other people… The way they're going to survive is to have a reading device that is affordable. Yeah. That but can they, compete with the quality and the They don't the price necessarily the have to compete on the, hard, on the hardware level. So they don't have to offer the whole vertical stack the way Amazon tries to do. That would be nice though. And well, maybe, but, but I, I, don't, I don't like, like being cheaper. locked into one ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, so I don't enjoy being locked into Amazon, but it is the best and it is the easiest and it is cheap. So I'm not paying a yeah. premium for access to and, the service. And that's, that's the other thing. I think that's the bottom line is I am willing to work harder to get my electronic book on my device if it's cheap enough. Yeah. So hmm. and, and the device is good enough. That's the biggest thing I like is that those e-readers and the e-ink e – just beats about anything and, else and, and the t in terms of like we were, you were talking about aftermarket support some shows ago Johan aftermarket support on the Kindle Amazon. hi my Kindle's broken have a free one have I'm, a free replacement and that yeah. has happened to me I went my Kindle is boot looping Pre please try and re reboot it I go I already have but cool I'll humor you try and do it nothing okay I've already um, I've Dispatch ordered you a new you. one it's going to be dispatched within the next three days you will see a deduction on your credit card we'll refund you everything and that's exactly what happened yeah. They sent me a new one, and I sent them the old one back, and they refunded me the postage fees to send them the old one back. Wow. Well, look, I, I know and Cecilia's father didn't even have to post his back. Yeah, my, yeah. my no, wife they, they well. asked, and they said if they don't receive it back, they'll charge me for the, for the new one. Yeah, so they've, they've obviously seen some fraud. Yeah. I asked for a replacement. Also, we didn't have to send it back. Yeah. However, she got the replacement faster <laughs> than the original one. That was a cool I, I had a new one <laughs> within a week. Yes, two days. With, That's crazy. And obviously the reason they can do that is because of the ecosystem. But anyway, yeah. anyway, I want to move us along. Anyway, yeah. Skype jumps the shark. I'm just going to let that hang there for a second.
What are you talking about? So first, let's cover the topic of jumping Bearing the shark. Bear in mind that shark attacks at the moment is a delicate subject in this country. <laughs> it's always so you, a delicate okay. subject in this country. I, I think, tackle this carefully. So, so I, first, I think, Khaled, you're, I think you're better at explaining the jumping the shark okay, metaphor so, and where it came from. So it's, jumping it's the shark little... is a TV trope from a TV show whose name I don't even remember. Uh, no, happy days. Thank you, Mixer. So, um, the, the, Fonzie. T- the, 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 the <laughs> Fonzie, exactly. The illustrious Fonzie. So, the, the trope goes that at this point, he, he, he leapt over a shark with like a jet ski or skis, like he was being pulled by a boat or something. And he jumped over the shark. And people said that that was the most awesome thing in TV ever. And at that point, the show just went downhill. See, no, but apparently, there's a bit more history there. He kept on saying, one day I'm going to jump over the shark. And apparently it was like part of the show through already he kept on going, I want to one day do this. And then he does and at it. the point when he did it, after that the show went down. How does this translate to Scott? Well well first let's how does this translate to a modern paradigm? It'll be like like how I met your mother, meeting the woman uh, and, and, and marrying and saying, This is your mother, and then the show carrying on. True, this doesn't actually match because those are all things that he, they reach their goal. Yes. So where's Skype reached I've got an example. <laughs> the goal. Prison break. <laughs> anyway, how, how has Skype jumped the shark? In this case, Skype has they've uh, released an update, and so they go this to monetize because they're, they're not making is, money. They're not right? making any money, um, and they've released an update. Good news for the Linux people: you're out of beta. Woo! <laughs> yes, <laughs> if you actually do use it on Linux, I, I, do. I don't. And by the way, the new version doesn't crash anymore. And oh, doesn't thank goodness. In the, because the big problem with the previous version is it will, it will be active there. You could see it there. Mm. And all of a sudden says, oh, you're online. I can't send messages to you. And it's like, yeah, but it's up. And you go, exit. Does it do anything? Just oh, so it's actually frozen. Why are you still using Skype? Because you use it for work. Okay. That's, 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 link. that's, that's the, the only link. Yeah. That's the only reason I've ever come across. Why are you using <laughs> Skype? I need it for work. Because my boss and that, is that's Skype. it. And yeah. I chat to my parents with it. Uh, with video conference with them. Um, before when I, I knew people overseas, I used to, I've tested both Google Chat and Skype. I'll give you. And five Skype years ago, worked better. Skype five, does work better. Five years yeah. ago, Skype was the ultimate. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so they've we updated. need to get to our Skype's jump the shark. We haven't even covered this. They've okay. updated that. Now what they're, what they're trying to introduce to help with the monetization, ads. Except not just you're going to have a little pop-up, you know, banner ad kind of thing like you do have with, I think, Evernote has, has that sort of well, thing. Well, like a, an ad in the app, you know, like a little ad that's, you know, either, yeah, exactly, a banner a or a little tape thing or in the menu anything. bar No, no, or these are supposed to be pop-up ads. So while you're busy, from, from the sounds of it, while you're busy talking to someone, you can get an ad pop-up, which takes into account um, maybe what you're talking about, takes into account uh, your info that you've given Skype to so stuff like age, gender, um, those types of things and tries to give you a relevant advert. No, no. And then also this, this helps with a conversation. Well, yeah, that's how they, they try to sell it. That's how they try They're and sell it. Is, it to gives you stuff you to talk point. about. Because when I call someone on Skype, I don't know what to talk about. You know, obviously. <laughs> I've got a better idea. When you get to my age and they look at my profile, I'm talking to my wife and this Viagra ad. <laughs> I'm going to be peed off. <laughs> well, look, I'm going to be slightly <laughs> upset. Having said this, if you've got, they say if you've got money on your account uh, or you've got a premium account, and there's a couple of ways you won't be getting the adverts. So these are purely oh. for the free Skype account. Yeah, and you already have a premium account, like a fish. So. Or stop using Skype. <laughs> the other reason why I use Skype, just by the way, is when I chat to my, between my brother in England, my folks are off the coast, and myself, I can do a three way Skype. Okay, but you can do that with Hangout as well. Not it's that it, well. it's dodgerific on Google at the moment. They yeah. really need to sort out we, the we interface. Did, we we and tested stuff. this; it, it doesn't work very well. Yeah. Okay. And and, the, and not just the interface, the back end stuff as well. I really think Skype's nailed the the connectivity layer, whatever you want to call that thing. Well, the big advantage with Skype is it's peer to peer, it's point to point. With Google, you're all three speaking to the Google servers, um, and in that something. Google's a big believer in cloud yes <laughs> anyway <laughs> so uh while we're on the topic of voip um ata is planning a mobile voip service and that's so, about all we know about it as well we know they're planning something we don't know any kind of uh, how much it's going to cost um we don't even know when they're going to be launching this we just know it's in the pipeline and the reasoning behind well this, they're, they're thinking about it yes but they're, they're not thinking about it in the kind of yeah kind of maybe they sound pretty serious about it yes and Why? From, from what I understand, the reasoning behind this is they're not trying to take on Vodacom and MTN in the voice space. And I, I think this is, to me, it sounds right because they're just starting out and trying to take them on in, in a space where Vodacom and MTN have been for so long. 
uh, is going to be difficult. I mean, rolling out the network as it is is tricky enough for a small player like ATA. And then trying to make money to stay in the business, that's even more difficult because now you have to try and convert consumers who are already with one of the big three. But with one of the only big well, two, the, the big two and the third. This is a you like because it's also a great way for them to get lots and lots of subscribers. Because then uh, what's going to also get you're going to have lots of people terminating in your network, which is where you make most of your money. Um, so if you can get your numbers up, is is the best way to get numbers. And VoIP services in the country, you do get them, but a lot of them are not very user not, friendly. Not that friendly. Yeah. And if, especially if they if they bundle this with a decent VoIP app that is simple to use and does it. In uh, fact, they what? build it straight into the phone app. Now, this yeah. is exactly what we were talking about. Um, now, Android might allow you to do this, right? However, like we were throwing some exactly this idea around in the office. Like, uh, and and our, our speculation is that um, your, your manufacturers like Samsung, Nokia, those guys – are unlikely to do that because they'll make Vodacom and MTN angry. And Vodacom and MTN, when it comes okay. to high-end devices, they decide what gets ranged. Okay, but wait, wait, here's wait, the wait, thing. Wait. ATA can talk to one of those big, well, one of those companies, LG, Samsung, whatever. Huawei. Okay, them too. And commission a device from them. Why not? Well, Touching. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, sure. This device already has a voiceover IP client built in. Yes. yes, but it's tricky to set up. Okay. You need like the SIP thingies. And My the, question is, what is what is Telcom saying about this? Telcom is ATA. If ATA I says know. it, it's Telcom. W- what I'm saying with this, if you push through an app that auto sets it up for you, done. Exactly. Yes. You can. And, and, on, and on Android, uh, and in, in fact, all the app stores, hopefully, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, so... Uh, and do you know what I like the most? I can down with that app. I should be able to also download my voicemails onto my phone, uh, and get like visual voicemail, like they've got yes. on the iPhone in the states. Um, now, the the other thing to take into consideration is that you need this on low end devices, like uh, devices that you can have for fifty rand a month on like top up type contracts and on prepaid devices. Devices cheap, that you cheap, can buy for a couple device. of hundred rand yes. for prepaid. Now that's where things get tricky. Yes, and but okay, what I also like about this idea. They're going VoIP, so they're focusing on their data network, which I think is fantastic. So instead of them trying to do, you get X minutes and then some SMSs, and then you get this itty bitty data, you know, whatever. Here's have 75 megs of data that you can burn through in two seconds, literally. Um, they give you a massive amount of data, and everything runs over that. I, I have one one query about this. We were talked before. You can't buy those data bundles for your phone. Through your phone. The, the 10 gig ATA data bundle? Yes. I can't get that on my phone. Not yet. Uh, you mean bolted onto your contract? Yeah. Yes. Bol- they will make this voice over IP service zero rated. They're not going to give you now. That'll be bulk even cooler. Of data. <laughs> That'll be They're even gonna cooler. Make it because that means, yeah, if you run out of data, your voice still then, works. Yes. Uh, and I'm sorry, I mean, how are you going to. I mean, what are you going to. Can you do voice over IP on Edge? Yes. I think so. You, you actually How much do you need? Codex. Which will, can do eight kilobits per second. You can even go low if you get a very, very good codec. Yeah. You actually you can use the GSM codec, which is the codec that your your phone uses basically to speak to the cell phone yes, towers, yes, yes. and it actually works at, at slower speeds. Uh, and then I think you're you, have, you'll you'll just have to prioritize that traffic, which they they're not doing at the moment. Yeah. But if they switch over to VoIP, they'll it's be they'll eight, do that. Eight kilobits per second. It is two five six. Yeah. Yeah, but still. Have you, I mean, data, you, I mean, have you tried to do your email in Santon City when it's a busy day? You're not getting data through at all. At least you can still make a phone call. Yep. I was on Ellis Park no, but on th- That's just not I mean, shaping. So basically, you, you, you say that the data through to my VoIP servers is at the same priority as my voice traffic. I don't know. So you can do it very sense. easily. Your, your main problem now, though. I'm not planning something else. It is well, there, there, are, there are other things as well. So um, and comments from the IRC, um, not just reminding me, uh, oh, this is something I wanted to bring up if it was relevant, and we haven't really touched on it specifically, but it's worth mentioning nonetheless. Uh, we also ran an article about um, uh, sources informing us that ATA's focus, is the telecom is going to change ATA's focus. So... I mean, obviously, they need to roll out mobile uh, services, but and Telcom, in answering our queries on the topic, said that their focus to launching a mobile arm has always been fixed mobile convergence. And so um, part of uh, ATA's focus is going to be Telcom withdrawing fixed-line services from rural areas completely okay. and servicing those areas completely with ATA. Um, I still don't see in a rural area, especially when you look at the price of the entry handset, which now has to do some... IP stack, 
and then be able to do voice over IP. They already do, though. A lot of the, um, you can get a Galaxy Pocket, a Samsung Galaxy Pocket, full Android experience with free music and blah, blah, blah. Thank you, Samsung. You can send me the check later for under a thousand bucks. But also remember, you don't need the VoIP for where you've got cell phone. You but need you've got more cell phone than where you've got data. No. Well, what do you mean you don't need VoIP where you've well, got cell phone? If you, if you ate it, right? Why not just give me a cell phone that works on the cell phone network? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the reason is that you want to you, you wanna win customers by, by offering them a really low-cost voice yeah. product. And you can do that with VoIP. Um, well, you can actually just cut your voice rates. Thank uh, you. <laughs> no, that's, thank you. The, now we're getting the VoIP to the is more for companies and stuff like that. Try yes. to find better routing technologies and stuff like that. So it's, I would say VoIP would be more for high end than the low end. On low end, you just give them a cell phone. Thank, that's my point. You give them a, you said under thousand. As long rate. as that can talk to the VoIP app. 280 yeah, Rand Nokia phone. There you go. And you can make calls. Yeah. But it needs to, you need to be able to make calls to and from the, the people on ETA VoIP. Yeah, but you but just that's get a normal standard. number. That's it's just it's just a number that you sure sure, but it needs to be completely transparent. Yeah, no, that's easy. So that's and not. provided by the network, it mustn't be a third because right now all these SIP things are third party. If they just mm. turn around and, and said, Ata, if they just turn around and said, we're going to give you uh, corporate level voice over IP services, but you can that get that through already. Telco Mobile. You can get all that through Telco Mobile already, or, or even better if they do something. If you're a corporate and you want okay. it, go to Telco Mobile and this get is, it. Amongst others, you can get it from other people too. Screen. They do something like Google Voice in America does. You get your one number and you say where it must go. Exactly. I want it to go to my VoIP client yeah. or I want it to go to I'll my I'll give you another phone. scenario. If I've not got an ATA voice over IP number and I use VoIP and I travel internationally, that's a, I perfect. Don't want, gonna, no. No, that'd be great. I'm sorry. I'll rather make a voice call because it's a hell of a no, lot no. cheaper if, than if data. If I have an ATA VoIP number and I'm overseas, Wi Fi, and friend. I go, Wi Fi, go onto my VoIP. All calls from 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 yeah, there, okay. route to my phone that I go buy a different SIM card in in England and it's quite cheap. Anyway, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so so yeah, this is the, an interesting clippany boss. I can't think of the English idiom. They're going to have to come up with a good idea why you want to do this. I'm sorry. It's, it's good reasons. I, uh, I can't see it. It's not it's, to, it's to offload mobile traffic onto fixed line traffic is one thing. So you can make calls effectively over Wi-Fi yeah. is one reason. Um, and so uh, and the other reason is obviously to be able to offer um, low cost services without really messing with voice rates too much is possibly I'm completely I'm speculating I'm just throwing ideas out there um, but just think you want to keep our arms in, indeed so because I mean especially looking at the way Celsius has been shaking the market um, when are you expecting details on this um any um, idea? No, not gonna I'm not gonna commit to anything right now. Okay. But I mean there are there are a couple of VoIP players making noise in the market. App chat's been making noise. Um and F and B. And so um and so these guys the easiest voice over IP it, service It's you can it's get. becoming uh, I mean it's not even becoming, it F is a big I, topic. I have to belong to F and B to get it. No. Uh, no, I tried signing up, I eventually gave up. Okay. That brings us to another flame bait topic, the HTC One X versus the Samsung Galaxy S3. Okay, unlock your phones, show the benchmarks in three, two, one, go. All right, so what's worth noting is that the device in the top right and the device in the bottom left are the same device. All Both right, of them so are S3s. The best device and the worst device is the S3, according to the benchmark. All right, the two are? HTC One X's, okay. and they are solidly. But but we'll 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 get to we'll, we'll we'll get to that because it did it did cause quite a bit of controversy on my broadband recently. Um, so but uh, to to kick the topic off, um, I did a, a comparison of the HTC One X and Samsung Galaxy S3, and um, to to try and explain why I thought the HTC One X, um, to me at least, was was the better device. And so I put it this way. Uh, whether you prefer the Samsung Galaxy S3 or HTC One X ultimately depends on the weight you assign to the various elements of the smartphones. Those include battery life, uh, graphics uh, processing power, uh, how they handle the storage, the button layout, the screen the, type, the screen type, the the uh, OEM customizations, and so on. So, do you want a more ergonomic physical button layout, better handling of internal storage and micro SD support, removable battery, and a host of Samsung specific features, including Video Hub, which lets you rent and buy videos, movies? In South Africa. In South Africa. Mm -hmm. yes, or yeah. do you want a good looking unibody device with powerful internals that favors the Android ICS button scheme at a lower price? The HTC One X. 
those are the questions you really have to ask yourself. So uh, with that said, I think the floor is open to debate. Now, the first thing, first things first, um, uh, the, 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 the button layouts. All right. So I know Gareth had some opinions uh, on this matter. Go through the order you had there. Was the buttons first? Okay. So ergonomic physical button layout on the Samsung Galaxy S3. Versus the One X. Versus the One X. This okay. is all versus the One X. All right. So Tim's holding up one there. All right. So... Um, so oh, you yeah, said you said something confused you there, uh, Gareth, when when I spoke about the physical button layouts. In in your article, uh, yeah, you spoke about um, I can't remember the exact terminology you used, but the way it button sounded, layout. yeah, the, the button layout. So the way it sounded was that you were weighing in the front buttons of the device along with the buttons that you find around the device, yeah. in kind of throwing them into the same pool. Yeah, absolutely and then not. You, and then you gave the Samsung a higher score as opposed to the yeah. HTC. I actually did split them out even in the scorecard. Okay. Um, so, so definitely not. And, yes. and we should that, cover that, both those that's separately. That's where it cleared up was when I read the scorecard. But when you actually spoke about it so, mm-hmm. or, or wrote about it, that's uh, why I was Okay, so, so, so what, what's cool about, um, uh, about the buttons? Okay. On, on the Samsung, the buttons along the sides... On the one side, if you're, if you're holding it in your right hand, um, the power button is underneath your thumb and the volume rockers are underneath your forefinger or your middle finger. If you're holding it in your left hand, the, the power button is underneath your index finger uh, and the volume rockers would be underneath your thumb, which is a really cool design. With the HTC, the power button's at the top, which is never really... Point. The hmm? power button is at the top. The power button is at the top. It's not on your thumb. It's, it's not at... It's, it's not on exactly. Your... It's not at a finger. So you have to reach around the device to try and get to the power button no, to switch the no, damn I, thing on. Wait. I must with the, the Samsung, it's in a convenient location. More of a problem with these phones is because they're so much bigger, you, 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 you have to move to get to the button now. So with the Samsung... So just use your other hand. Well, so now, now, I, have to to be, now I have to hold it in my left hand. With the Samsung... It's, it yeah, doesn't matter. When, when interacting with the phone, you are most probably going to use both your hands because you're not typing with your one hand. You can. I am. Depends on... Depends what you're doing. If I'm, yes. just, watching, if I'm just checking Twitter... The fact is, yeah, then you're on, look, underneath, with, with the right-handed user, underneath I, your thumb is, is the easy way. Personally, I feel that the fact that the power button is at the top. I don't have to remember left or right. doesn't matter. It's it, at with the, the Samsung, it's always on the right. Uh, what, what I was explaining was it depends on whether you're holding it in the left hand or the right hand. So Samsung, it's always on the right-hand side, don't you tend always to underneath your thumb. <laughs> Hang on, let me finish. <laughs> and it has always been there with every Galaxy, yes. with every device of theirs. It's always on the, the right-hand the, side. The, the HTC... These devices have always been at the top. At the top, but they varied between left and right. Oh, okay. Okay, Okay, but don't you end up hitting the power button by accident, being on the side? No. It's what, what, because you know where it is. You, you've got a weighted opinion there. I'm asking. No, something no, else. What, what I did find is I, I'd never hit it. I never hit this button by accident. But what does happen is I, I'm busy using the device, and I must say this is as a reviewer. I'm busy handling it, trying to do something, and then I accidentally push this infernal button, which also unlocks it. The home okay. button. The home button. Yes. And your opinion, um, which is a, another contentious issue. We'll get to that. Mind the fact that the buttons disappear on on the, the Samsung is the only thing that I find a bit odd because every now and again I start looking for the buttons. And it sounds crazy, but they. So Sort of go invisible. Yeah, no, no, like, no, I want to be bottom, an iPhone. No, the I bottom buttons we'll get to. <laughs> and, and oddly enough, that, that's the only thing. The only other thing that I've learned, which I would imagine is exactly the same with the One X, I had to move all the buttons I use very often to the side that my thumb is because to try to reach across, my thumb was going into spasm. Yes. Oh, so well, I just that all big. my buttons yes. to the left hand side, and I realized suddenly I have all the screen straight and I can use the phone quite easy. Okay. Yes. All right. Next Fair point. enough. All right. So, <laughs> so, so, the, so the sticking bottom, with buttons, the, you've got this bottom row of buttons, yes, the right? Bottom, All right. So now, as, as Tim's already noted, yes. um, except they're not they're so not soft, soft on the Galaxy they're, S3. They're capacitive, still. Um, and on the Galaxy S3, the one is a hardware button. On the Galaxy S3, you have from left to right menu, home, just and back. Just do one where your yeah. lights aren't going to come. Okay. Out. So those are the older. Th- those are the ones that they've been using with every Galaxy device that they've launched. It's always the same layout. Uh, okay, it's yeah, always yeah. in that order. The HTC uses the newer uh, buttons from, say, Ice Cream Sandwich. What the Galaxy Nexus has, back, home, and multitasking. Uh, uh, you hold it up. You're busy talking. Okay. Unless it'll be so, easier for me to gesture. Back, home in the middle, multitasking so, over on this uh, side. I'm just going to okay. move this along a bit more. What are the other big differences between the two? Okay, screen is the other one um, now, but you have to look incredibly closely to see the differences. Mm. So the HTC One X does have the better display. The, the Samsung has opted to go with a Super AMOLED, which uses pentile technology, which means that they arrange the sub-pixels. What's with, the reason? With reason. Uh, a pentile over, say, the, the, the uh, Super AMOLED Plus displays offers a longer life. 
uh, as in physical life, not battery life. Physical life. Okay, yes. interesting. Mm. Um, and so the the HTC uses a super LCD display. So it is it is when you look closely enough, noticeably crisper. The images are crisper. The colors are more vibrant. With the naked eye, or using a magnifying? No, no, no. You have you have to look closely. But so with you the won't naked notice eye. it. Because the fact is you hold your phone at about 20, 30 you. centimeters from your face, yeah. right? The one thing about the AMOLEDs that Except I will that, say that you can that? notice with your, with your naked eye, blacks are deeper on the Super AMOLED than what they are on the Super what LCD. What the goggles thing that we were looking at last time? Was it Yo, with, with the VR goggles yeah. close to so your then face. You, then you're going to notice a difference. Then you're going to yes. notice a difference. <laughs> the camera on the Samsung Galaxy S3 is better than on the HTC One X, but you will also only notice when you zoom in on the photo. If you are digitally zooming your photos yes. after you've taken them, you will, you will see that uh, the, the One X does some post-process blurring thing to okay. try and make them look acceptable okay. when you well, do I normal Well, I took scale. some photos of this thing at Ellis Park last weekend. It's and nice, it's eh? Very good. And, and this, this uh, instant shot. And yeah, the, the software so on the One X is better than the software on the S3. So the camera software on the One X is better. The stock the stock, stock camera software okay. is better but, on I mean, the one. I that's X. something you can just load a different application. Well, no. I don't, I don't know of a camera application that does what the One X's camera application does, but I stand to be corrected. Send, send your corrections to Jan is an idiot okay. at ltnet.tv <laughs> uh, and we will do it in our fan corrections section next week. Okay. <laughs> the other big difference is, is the unibody. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, versus the removable the battery. Removable battery. Okay, the now, removable back is your removable battery and extra storage. And micro SD sp support. Now we asked a question in the short break we had. How many people do you know has actually bought extra batteries? For the uh, Galaxy uh, S2, a lot. Because going, it had a crap battery. I'm going to go by when it comes out, the extended battery life. I, I, a, I want it's the not bigger a battery. It's real market type of thing. It's, it's a feature for power users. Yeah. Okay. In that in that area, you're correct. I probably wouldn't, um, no, under normal circumstances, with the S3, I probably would because I've used it and I know it can barely make a, a day. Mine's with, dying already. Yeah. Well, yes, exactly. Um, so I know with the type of usage I put it through, I can barely make it. However, that said, um, perhaps we should get to the hardware issues I've had. I don't know if you want to mention some of the other uh, no, notice, the differences. differences. Look, okay. The other big thing is the SD card. Uh, and for me, mm. I use a lot of storage. But I'm, I'm, I'm not just a power user. user. Power user. Mm. And the other thing is I, I want to have more battery life. So one of the things is when the extended battery comes out, I'm going to go buy it because I want my battery to last longer. So... Being a power user, those things are important to so me. So power user, the S3 is probably Having a better said that, option. I can definitely, I'll agree. This plastic here is, is flimsy. It feels... And the funny unsafe. part is, it's the same material. It's made from... Uh, it's apparently. made from the same material, the backing on the S3 and the One X. Where's the... Uh, the One thing I noticed they made with yours, they made it rougher, which actually makes it feel Well, I, I don't think they made it rougher. They just made it matte. See, once yeah. again... It's matte versus gloss. And I of, prefer matte. That but that of, is a very personal that's what, issue. That, 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 yes. That, that sort of comment Every, gets solved by a little housing. Just put a, yeah. add a skin to it. Okay, but now I, you're I making it slightly thicker. I prefer using them naked, yeah. And, well... It's quite expensive when they get damaged. Mm, but it is. Okay, uh, but it's, it's quite expensive if they fall on the front. If they fall on the back, you're not going to notice. Just, uh, I'm going to add a skin as soon as what possible. What else do we want to add? All right, so what's important is the controversy um, uh, on my broadband specifically was caused around the benchmarking. Yeah. Now, as we showed, um, my Galaxy S3, which is being returned tomorrow, um, ha is, is showing significantly lower benchmarks than yours. Um, and the, the reason for that, I was chatting to a Samsung tech today, is still not exactly known, but the hypothesis is that there is something wrong with the CPU. On In your specific on, phone. Yes, and if okay. you drill down to the benchmarks, and, this, uh, and I didn't say this to the tech at all. Um, I didn't tell him, maybe I did. I'll have to think about it. But like, um, to, to the best of my knowledge, I did not tell him that you know, I'm noticing this in the benchmarks. But if you look at Antutu, it's uh, the what is lower. Everything else is the same to a normal S3 benchmark except CPU, uh, normal integer calculations, and CPU float. But so much lower that it shaves off 3,000 points off the score. Okay. Um, so, so the, this, and so he's like, if the CPU is damaged, it will affect battery life as well. Yeah. Because we got a lot of comments saying that the battery life 
uh, that we are reporting is not nearly the battery life that the device should get. But now my concern is these are such soft issues. How will an average person who isn't no doing these comparative benchmarks know that the CPU and their device is faulty? I've, I mean, the device is usable. Yeah. I'm, I'm making calls and they, they're clear enough. I'm, I'm checking the games. internet. I'm on the Wi-Fi. Everything's is, working. Also, how prevalent is this? Indeed. And that we, we'll you, never know. You know, you, you never know. You, because you always get one or two bad, bad ones in a batch. Also added to this, the HTC One X. You can talk about its Wi-Fi problems. <laughs> well, um, uh, yeah, we, we can we can talk about their problems as long as we mention the the HJS three's problems as well. So, uh, Johan, you've looked into this, right? Well, I've, I, I read up a little bit where there's it seems to be there's a soldering issue onto the antenna on a certain series of HTCs. But HTC I, has admitted that there is a problem, admitted. and they've said that they've fixed it in their production line. So, people must just be careful when they do report this Wi-Fi thing that it. The hardware failure, what it looks like, is a specific series. It's a H120, whatever no. batch. So just check on that. Now, unfortunately, I was not able to figure out which batch this specific phone of mine is in. However, we've got a, a WDS Wi-Fi network at the office. So we've got multiple APs on the same SSID, which seems to, um, for some reason, this HTC just won't log into that network. And you've got two HTCs in the office and neither of them. And both of them are having the same problem on that Wi-Fi yes. network. And it's whether you have good signal or bad signal. I'm standing there with my Nexus S on the one hand, the HTC on the other hand. One is connecting. The other one just hates me. Now, just to test a, a, test a, a, a generated blue screen of death on a, on a Toshiba notebook for another discussion, I created a AP on my Toshiba notebook and both of us could connect to the notebook which is in the same area as the rest of those Wi-Fi distortions, noise, or whatever you mm. want to say, happily, and we could actually work through that. So it seemed to be linked it to WDS. It seems to be a, a Wi-Fi relay service. That is, that's somewhere there, somewhere could, be some there, there could be something in okay, that. Okay, interesting. So it, maybe, maybe there is a fault on the network that it's not handling properly. Or handling as well as the others. Oh, see, right. with, with that, uh, I think we, we, that's what you look uh, Well, not, not quite yet. I think because there, there have been posted some videos, just so you guys know, this is not an issue that I've personally seen, but I also only tested one device. Yeah. They did and you've only they tested did. one device. Yeah. Vodafone UK customers have reported dialing on the Samsung Galaxy S3 and the call ringing once and then being dropped. So they are not are on a, a specific network. Vodafone UK, just Vodafone. Uh, well, those are the videos I've seen. Okay, so, so it might be an issue with Vodafone. Vodafone's SGS3. Remember, they get, they might be getting a specific now, set of devices. I can't okay. say because I literally only got my SIM unlocked today, so I haven't. I've hardly used it. Okay, oh, now, just I, add, uh, I made and received a number of calls on the SGS3, I, I, and they I all seem to go through just fine. Works great on SIP. I must just add, just just to be fair, um, the same videos on the HT uh, on the XTA developer about this Wi-Fi issue spoke about the good old press it in the one corner, and your signal strength changes. Now I can't see to simulate it on this specific one, so I don't think this mm -hmm. is a I've tried as well antenna problem. You shouldn't you shouldn't be no 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 it's a connection problem. So well, it's a I connection mean, between the antenna on, in the back. So I don't think the problem that we're experiencing is the one that they're reporting. Oh, overseas. in your offices, yes. yeah, agreed. It's a different. But spot. we are going to look problem. into it, and obviously, um, I hope this has not happened because okay. MTN is what, quite. What a problem. it boils down to, they're actually both great phones. So they, they, they have slightly different problems and slightly different advantages. Go look at both. Check off the market support. Whoever gives you the best support. Yeah. What we've and seen so far is that Samsung software support is kind of crap. HTC, at least, it's bad. But, but if you your hardware work breaks, it. who will fix, who will it, for fix it for you? For free in the fastest possible time yes. is another thing to consider. Yes. But neither device will disappoint you when you'll be happy with oh, both of them. Great, yeah. mm -hmm. Both of them great. Mm -hmm. So um, sticking with devices, and this was pretty big news this week, is Microsoft have announced a tablet. Yes. Um, and they've it's called beautiful. it and they've called it the Surface, which is kind of funny because they used to or they probably still have the actual Microsoft Surface, which is not a tablet, it's a table yes. computer. So I've called it the Microsoft Surface 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well Miniaturized done. Microsoft I must say, Surface. I really like this form factor. I like the back stand, which puts the thing at the right angle. So a lot of people say compared to the iPads, and if it breaks off if you actually, if you look at science, it's actually quite. Looks Don't quite break strong. it off. It's well, just, you're bending it the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> I was just when I saw that stand coming out of the tablet itself. It's part of the tablet. I hope it's at least a field replaceable part. That if it does 
break right. off, then it, it will at least. But yeah, yeah it must be so integrated into the body yes, that it's that you actually break it. half of the back cover from the tablet. A keypad's so, very nice. Just with us, they announced keyboard. two. Keyboard. What keyboad? keyboard? Keyboard. They, they, well, it's more like a key. It's got a Windows uh, key on it. It's more like a key <laughs> clock. Of course it really. does. So they've announced two. One is ARM. And one is Intel. The one will run Windows RT, and the other one will want run, run Windows, Windows 8, 8 Pro. Yes. So they, they call Sorry, it and Windows 8 Pro. They yes. call it Windows 8 Pro. Yes. Mm. So Which, you can actually run all your Office applications. No, you can run it on the Windows. The Pro part is you can add this to do domain. Yes. So it's you meant actually to attach this device. It's to meant to control. address absolutely the enterprise market that BlackBerry missed that with, a, with a playbook. Um, now, what is interesting, because I had this argument with other journalists today, and I'm like, yeah, you know, because they're really excited about the Windows RT device. And I'm like, yes, I understand, but there's no ecosystem there. And, and, you know, unless the apps that work on Windows Phone also, and even then. Even if those apps th work. Those are just 100,000 apps. Never mind 100,000 apps. Try and find the good quality ones. <laughs> That's the problem. You have 100,000 apps, and if Hello. I search for Reddit, I don't find a Reddit app within the first five years. Yeah. However, apparently, the, the Microsoft Partner Program, uh, if you upload apps to the Metro Store, which is going to be accessible in Windows 8, and m maybe it'll, it'll happen cross-platform, but from the sounds of it, it, it is. Um, you have to compile for all the platforms, x86, x32, or uh, x86, 64-bit, yeah. uh, and ARM. ARM. It has to run on all three um, for your app to be accepted. It's not a biggie. The, the Visual Studio is No, three. apparently you just recompile. Yeah, you it's just, really great. You run off the same code base, you just recompile and it works. If you've used the right libraries. The yes. Right. Yeah, you have to make sure that you use the, you're coding against the right yeah. libraries. However... Well, you're coding against Windows 8. From, and yeah. Yes, exactly. And from the, from the sounds of it, they are breaking backwards compatibility with Visual Studio. Yeah. Um, but they've announced many things that they've backtracked on in Visual Studio. Well, they, so, have, Visual Stu they have free editions for pretty much everything now. So you can make... Windows 8 Metro apps, you can have your usual old Windows 8 desktop or terminal apps, uh, terminal command, command line apps. Um, there are free editions of Visual Studio for all of those. Yeah. Look, if you've but, not seen this video, go try and find it. So I think it's surface.com. Yeah. I must just say that when the keyboard slides and actually clips onto the device itself, that magnet. Well, is technically, I still so think they've stole a bit of that from, from the iPad. Well, uh, uh, fine, but they've added, yes. a, they've yes. added a keyboard. Yeah, they've added, added a keyboard. keyboard. Yeah, the keyboard's quite nice. Um, and the keyboard's also Bluetooth, so it actually doesn't speak via that magnet. So, so a couple of things, all right? So, UltraBookiller. No. Yes. So there's a battery in that, in yep. that cover. No. What? It's a Bluetooth keyboard. Oh, oh yes, yes. Yeah. Obviously, so it has to the, be powered. The, the, that powers the keyboard. But it's not like any of the Asus Transformer line where you have a battery in the keyboard which charges the tablet part. No, no, no. Not yeah. like that. So, so, so let's, let's get this. iPad killer, Ultrabook killer, Asus Transformer killer. No, no, How do you no. Go, uh, <laughs> not, not an I'm, iPad killer. Okay. No. iPad win. Ultrabook? Maybe. The, 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 like the, the, what the old light light tablets are for the, the business person who's on the plane and he wants to actually do some real work like Word documents or something like that which the iPad doesn't quite fill that niche uh, you know it's slightly missing it I think it will fill in there quite nicely depends on the battery life depends on many things I'll, but I'll, I'll disagree with you lot just now and um, ASUS Transformer I don't know if do you want to make really good work really well as a really great Ubuntu machine <laughs> I would love to have Ubuntu on that. Well, mm. it's x86. I know. I just, to me, <laughs> as long as it didn't do it, that's how, how unlockable is that uh, UEFI? It has to be unlockable, right? <laughs> um, boots DOS. So, so, yes. so Windows Man, um, iPad killer, Ultrabook killer. You can weigh in on the Asus if you feel like it. You see, the thing is going to be like, I think everything is now as strong as the applications. So what is going to make, like Tim is saying, if this thing is running the full office suite and the executive can get into his Outlook because he doesn't want to use a web interface. What's wrong with virtualizing Outlook on Citrix on your iPad? I'm on the plane. I don't have Wi-Fi. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I want to disagree with you on form factor issues. Firstly, the keyboard is not rigid. It is, a, it is, it is like that magnetic thing on the iPad, right? Yeah. Try to use that on your lap. It's <laughs> not going to kill the Ultrabook. No. All right, the Ultrabook has a rigid base. It, this, uh, and this is, this is an argument we had in the office, which is but why... I bet you they'll I, bring one I'm, out that's solid. Well, that, that, yeah, there are two keyboards, isn't there? One for the RT version and one for the x86 version? Yes, but neither are rigid, are they? I think one of... 
Yes, one has proper keys. No, 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 keys, that's, that's not a keyboard. That is a cover you put onto the, 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 the magnetic keyboard to make it tactile. It doesn't actually replace the cloth and it doesn't make it rigid. Not rigid. No, and plus, okay. even if it were yeah. rigid, even, Many if, misunderstandings. even if it were rigid, it still has that kickstand thingy. So put that kickstand okay, thingy so on your lap. You're going to be able <laughs> to use it on your lap. Or on, okay. uh, and maybe not even on a plane. It on depends plane, on how much space. Tray. Yes, yes but the tray. tray might be not wide enough. 10 inches, if you've taken your 10 inch tablet out on a plane, you, uh, your lid fits in with your tablet easily. Okay. And but that's in. It really depends on the. On the, what, what on is the with this? How, how much how the, is, the kickstand works. You can, must be with this thing, is because it's magnetic, you can buy different keyboards. So if they find there is a problem, they can quite easily replace a keyboard with a better one. So they'll innovate that. That, that I don't the, think will be a long term problem. Okay, cool. But at and that's the same time, um, are you actually going to find a keyboard that has a rigid enough hinge? So that you don't have to use the kickstand. So if you can't, if you can't use the kickstand, no. you can't use it on well, your lap. I mean, you, what, why not just a what zag I'm about it. is you basically yes. get a keyboard that the, a back piece slots out and locks in. And then you put the stand on that. Yeah. Proper docking station. Yeah. So, Effectively. Yes. Transformer. So like a transformer. All right. So, so in just point, you know, know, gotta, gotta have to get used to this keyboard because it's not got tactile feedback. It's, it's, it's very flat. But you get a tactile cover for it, which is cool. I mean, if you're working on a table, but uh, like, I can't see journalists using it because uh, when, when we're at an event, um, y- you need something with a rigid base in case you need to work on your lap. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like the, the people but attending… you can type on the screen. Conferences, not as a journalist. Maybe as a conference attendee, it'll work. Mm. Um, but if you are somebody who needs to type really fast… Uh, you know, if you're taking the minutes of a meeting or whatever and you're in a very uncomfortable spot, it won't work for you. Okay. However, I think in, in your average corporate environment where you're taking it from boardroom to boardroom, it's ideal. Why, why not? It's ideal. Mm. So, uh, Applications, that's what's going to make the difference. Yeah. The fact that you, you, everybody hates it, but you're if you are running Windows. Suite, you're integrating your act directory. The AD admins can push through right to what you're allowed to do and not, not allowed, allowed to, to do. Lock the device if it gets started. And that's the reason I will not be getting one. <laughs> Admin's a chat. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's a fight developers have, I think, with the main admins <laughs> all, all through the country. Yeah. Yes. But, you, you know, for if your average run, user that you're trying to protect it, your network against. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but if it, you know, for the average, the average network user that you're trying to protect your network yeah, against. I just got to. Domain privileges, absolutely. I have got, and, and I hate Windows 8. The one thing I've got to say about Windows 8, it locks into your Windows Live account. All right. So, yes, this device, if it does get stolen, you can disable it over there. You can actually destroy it and go ahead and get yourself a new one. Uh, but there are third party network network tools that allowed you to do that with notebooks and yeah. stuff, right? So a lot of networks have already, de- or a lot of companies have already deployed well, something like that. What's quite nice is you don't need to think about it. You, you know it will work and you know it's built in. Yeah, yeah. All right. No, uh, interesting. It's going to be interesting development. If it okay. runs off a suite, <coughs> it's going to be interesting deploy. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. All right. So uh, another thing that happened uh, this time in the Google camp and in South Africa is we have live traffic. In two cities. In Google Maps. Johannesburg and yeah. Cape Town. They only announced Johannesburg, um, okay. and, but Cape Town was there. So, um, so here's, here's to adding me, more cities. Because they draw these lines. So what does green mean? Uh, Everything's working fine. Yes. And red means there's a Congestion. Problem. There's a problem. But how no, bad of a congestion? I mean, Black is Oh, is bad. it black as well? Oh, yes. Oh. So uh, it's, black, like red, it's black with red stripy things. Black it's means like, danger, danger. Black means bring coffee. And then <laughs> you're going to be how do they getting all this info? Is people just run, running around with their um, it's, it's apparently predictive. Look, I don't want to speak out of turn, but Google have, have gathered a lot of data and it's predictive. I do not think it's like TomTom where they plug into TrafficNet and get their data. So, oh, well, look so in other words, they've already got a whole lot of traffic information and they say this is what traffic should be like. I would Ach, no, and, and, it's and then maybe they are actually plugging into Google devi- to devices connected yeah. to stuff like Latitude. Yes. Um, so they, people okay. using oh, people yeah, using navigation on their Android devices, maybe. Okay. So uh, I can only imagine why wouldn't you plug into that if people have already given their consent. My Latitude. That you can no, use absolutely, that. they do that. It's confirmed. <laughs> they do that through, uh, I think, uh, Navigate and Maps on mm. the device. Mm. I run Latitude all the time, so I assume my device is feeding information back to yep. them all the time. Yep. Okay. Um, so the more Android devices come online in South Africa, which and is are why in, I think they've maybe covered all the places where you have the Android density. Makes sense. Go no. Okay, but I want to come back now. You said the green lines means there's no congestion. Mm. So all the road should be green. Oh, Ideally, but in Johannesburg, that's never no, going to happen. The place is covered. 
only the places covered. So only in Johannesburg and Cape Town no, on the I'm roads that are covered. The, the sample here. So yeah. there is traffic and it's moving fast. There we go. No, 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 no. It, they they color code everything. Yeah, you're no. not listening. Why isn't there green lines down here? Because those roads are not covered. Those roads have there, but that when when those roads are not covered, it means there is no traffic information for those roads. We, we have the mixer telling us that it means green means that there is traffic moving on that. Yes, that means they a, are actually measuring okay, traffic yeah, on that road, my point and is, it is good. My point is, a little legend from Google would have been very. There is a legend. It's in the map. Okay. Click it. <laughs> cool. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> so I'm um, trying to figure it out. There. Yeah, it's just small. Oh. So fast is green, then yellow, then red, then black and red. Okay. Mm. <laughs> However, I, I want to emphasize this. If there is no color coding on the road, it is not being measured right now. So yes. I know there's a dispute about this now. That is what it said in the blog post. Okay. Okay. So that is why Google said, hey, if your road isn't covered, get an Android device <laughs> and feed us data. Okay. Yeah. Effectively is what they said in the so blog post. So they've got some sort well, of Well, they would be measuring algorithm. it. There's, no one, there's not enough information about it. So well, they, yeah, I guess. I, you know, Google might filter one data point. They go, uh, not enough data, maybe. Okay. Cool. So the first kicker is a Lego Turing, Turing machine. machine. This is awesome. What is a Turing machine? Okay, it's basically Alan Turing. We all know about a very, very, very bright man. Incredibly great man. During Second World War, helped break the Enigma machines and stuff like that. Uh, he's like considered the father of computers or one of the great fathers of computers. And he postulated a universal Turing machine or universal machine that basically Norton wants infin infinite ticker tape. So there's a couple of things. It's, it's not a real machine. Mm. It's just a conceptual machine. And basically, if, if you have a language or machine that is Turing complete or a Turing machine, you can simulate any other language or program or algorithm with it. And it is a state machine. Yeah. I'm just going to put that out there. So what is it? Kind it's of like important. It's a computer. It's a computer, zero, zero computer. Zero in its yeah. basest form. It, it's basically, if it's not a Turing machine, it's not a computer. Or, or a CPU in yes. its basest form, perhaps, is the better way. So what? It. It's reading information and making decisions on that? No. It's just reading information? K yeah. Kind of. I mean, if you're in a state, you, uh, get some sort yeah, of, okay. you get some sort of impulse, and then it either changes state... Stays or, in the same stays state. In the same, stay, same state. That's what I'm asking. Okay. So if you want to count that as making decisions, it's, it's well, it very, is. very low level making but decisions. You can implement but all yes. the high level stuff with it. Yes. Eventually. Thank you. So yeah. what is this machine? Okay. <laughs> this one is built from Lego. So it's built from Lego. And this thing just runs around this track and just reads all the states. The state changes. Is that yes. right? Yeah. Very clever. It's very, very cool. cool. And makes me want to play with Lego. But I, I want to go play Diablo 3's new patch instead. There's a Lego Diablo store. Lego. <laughs> Lego <laughs> Diablo. <laughs> How do we get through the show without talking about Diablo? Except you'd probably get an error at the toll when trying to buy. Yeah. No, yep. no, no, no. I'm thinking, you know, you get the, like the Lego versions of the games, a Lego version of Diablo. <laughs> In any case. <laughs> anyway. Qualcomm has a new uh, method of battery benchmarking to see how hot a battery gets. You know, there have been complaints about the iPad 3 and the Samsung uh, and the HTC, uh, Samsung Galaxy S3 and HTC One X do get a little hot. So this is how, this is how we used to do things, you know, thermal imaging. Uh, so take but, the back of the phone, let it run, and then take a uh, thermal image. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 but that's old hat. That's yes. old hat. This they have is, a new way. They have a new way. A better way. And that is? And that is mixer, anytime you're ready. With the butter. Butter taste. <laughs> what? You take the phones upside down, you put a piece of butter on top of it and see which one uh, melts Those the are just the processes, I think. And you just see which one melts the quickest. Yes. Yep. <laughs> I'm like, no. Well, it actually, it's quite an effective way of visually seeing... The, the, this reminds me of that Google Chrome ad about how fast Google Chrome is. And the potatoes. And, no, and then oh, the, wait, the that Opera, was Opera spoof. So this is begging for a spoof. It's going to get – it Wonderful. must. Wonderful. Internet must spoof. Assemble. <laughs> and uh, with that – What's the measuring there? Ha -ha. So many seconds to melt a block of <laughs> butter. Absolutely. Yes. Millimeters per minute. And the but, but the butter has to be the same density, has to be – yeah, this has to be scientific. Same amount of butter. Yeah. Uh, let's keep on thinking and of yes, battery FS. Yes. Which is the new line okay, that they're up. working on, <laughs> which is quite a full battery FS. <laughs> so this is better or butter. Better thermal imaging. Yes. 
<laughs> with that, thank uh, you for joining our ludicrous show. <laughs> we hope you, enjoy, you enjoyed geeking out with us. Uh, we love geeking out uh, with you. So uh, next time around, if you're catching the, uh, the 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 recorded version of this on YouTube or on uh, or on our site or in the podcast, uh, tune into the live show. We stream on Wednesdays, somewhere between half past seven and and half past, past eight midnight. <laughs> um, so we we generally keep people updated in the My Broadband Forum Twitter, uh, or we sign into IRC and let people know uh, how the show setup is going. We also have a Facebook page and we're on Google+. Plus. Yeah, and, and we do tend to also start the stream at 7.30 even if setup isn't completely Try finished to. yet. Yes. Yeah. Um, so uh, with that, Tim, who are you and where can people find you? I'm Tim Hawk on Twitter at Tim underscore Hawk. I don't tweet that much, but you can also find me on YouTube at, at the Lost List for Geek Shows. Cool. And in the wiki. Yes. Uh, Kharat, who are you? All the the misspellings. Me. (laughs) Kharat, who are you and where can people find you? I am Kharat Vermeer and people can find me at about.me slash hockey ZA. Sweet. Johan. Yes. Johan. And you can find me at about.me slash Johan else. Uh, Don't look for me at Twitter. I'm not there anymore. And Star Dates. Star Dates, blog.who dash else. Uh, That's all in w- your about page. That's all on the about page. Oh. Just join me there. Brilliant. I'm Jan Vermeulen at Jan VZA on Twitter. I do tweet, not, not a lot, so you can follow me and feel safe. I'm not going to spam you with, uh, with a whole bunch of junk. I'm also on Google Plus where I never post, so you'll never get spam from me there. Uh, Jan Vermeulen, and then you just circle the ugly one. Uh, and thanks to the mixer who you can't find. Yes, except on our wiki. True. If you look hard enough. Well, you don't find them. You find their traces. Indeed. So with that, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us.